Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you an MSI GF63 Thin Gaming Laptop. I'm going to take you on a teardown or disassembly tour so you can see how to open it up safely, get inside, and all the various components that you can access. So to start with guys, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then going to flip it over to access your bottom case screws. Now there's quite a lot of screws on the bottom case. You have these four on the bottom of your screen, these three on the left side, these three on the right side, this one in the middle, and this one towards the top middle. Now after you remove all the screws, guys, you're going to take a small, flat, preferably plastic pry tool and go around the seam of the bottom case and gently, slowly but firmly pry it off of the computer. I say plastic pry tool because metal pry tools tend to scratch your case a lot more than plastic ones, so that's why I recommend plastic. Also keep in mind up here on the top of your screen, on the back of your computer guys, you're going to have an HDMI port on the back. That's going to make it kind of a pain to get that bottom case up and around that HDMI port, so be aware of that when you're taking your bottom case off so you don't break your bottom case. After you've removed your bottom case, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now, as a side note, guys, with my computer projects, I have my computer sitting on an anti-static pad. Either that or use an anti-static bracelet, but either one is a great idea to help you avoid damaging things in your computer when you're operating on them. For your reference, there'll be a link above, also below in the description. It'll have a list of all the tools and supplies I use on this computer, as well as any replacement or upgrade components like your drives, your RAM, uh, your battery, things like that that go into the computer. It'll all be in that link below in the description. So the first thing I'll show you guys, this is your battery, your main computer battery down here, and it's plugged into the motherboard right here. To unplug the battery from this motherboard port right here, if you see on your plug right in the center here, there'll be a spot to put a pry tool where you put it in there, you press down, and you slide the port downward to unplug it. However, when I attempted to take my battery out, I realized there's not a lot of wiggle room here. These are very short wires, and that plug goes right into the battery. It was very difficult for me to unplug that. So I ended up having to take the entire battery out instead of just unplugging it. That leads to another problem with this battery. This battery, as you see, there's no screws. This battery is glued down. So you can either muscle it up with your hands. Um, if you're going to take that option, please be sure you don't bend the battery too much as you're muscling it up and, and breaking that glue because you could damage your battery. The other option to taking the battery out is to use a heat gun. But as most of you know, heat and loaded batteries, that's an explosion risk. So first of all, if you're going to take that route, make sure your battery is completely discharged. The next thing you want to do, make sure the heat gun is kept several inches off away from the battery and don't linger in one place too long. Go around it nice and even, smooth movements. Don't linger in one place too long. Get that glue under there nice and gooey, nice and soft and then use a credit card type tool to slide underneath the battery as many places as you can to get it up. That's the best way to get up that battery. The next thing I'll shout out is your RAM right here. RAM generally looks this way in laptops. You'll have a spring-loaded metal arm on either side of your RAM stick. The way to get your RAM out is to pry those arms away from each other gently, away from the RAM stick. The RAM stick will then release, Oftentimes, it will even pop up a little bit to make it easy for you to pull it out of the port. To get the RAM stick back into the port, as you'll notice on your RAM stick, you have a long end of, of the stick and a short end. So you can only plug that in one way, so you don't have to worry about plugging it, it in upside down. But you would basically plug it in there, get it nice and flush, and then you'd press right here in, in the center of the RAM stick, press down. Those metal arms will grab onto it and secure it in place. In this computer, you have two ports right here. I think the max for this model computer was 64 gigabytes of, of RAM. So if you wanna max that out, which is always a good idea, it's always a cheap way to max out performance in a computer is maxing out your RAM. Uh, you can get two 16 gigabyte sticks. I'll have some suggestions for the RAM, also replacement batteries and other parts above in the link. I'll also put the link below in the description. 
Next thing I'll shout out here, these are your drives. This is a solid state drive M.2 port right here on top. And this is a SATA drive, a hard drive or solid state drive, whatever you want. These are your two drive ports. To get the M.2 drive out, you would undo this single screw right there on the right. And then this drive would slide out of that port. To get the SATA drive down here, the 2.5 inch, you would undo this screw here on the right, this screw on the left. Then you would use this black tab on the bottom to pull down on this, unplug it from this port, and that would get your hard drive inside the caddy out. To get the hard drive out of the caddy, if you flip this over, there'll be two screws uh, on either side of the caddy on the back. That is how you remove that hard drive from the caddy. And again, I'll have some upgrade options below in that description. Next thing I'll point out is your Wi-Fi card up here. Uh, you'll take off this yellow piece of tape if you have that. And there's a single screw right there, just like the solid state drive. You'll undo that screw. Your Wi-Fi card will release and you can slide it out of that port. You'll also have to undo these two antenna wire that run down through this hinge assembly. Those are snaps. Those just snap right up and off of your Wi-Fi card. And again, I'll have some Wi-Fi card upgrade options in that link in the description. The next thing I'll shout out is your speakers. You have a speaker here on the left of the, of the screen, speaker here on the right of the screen. As you see here, after the battery has been removed and after the SATA drive has been removed, you'll see that the speaker here on the right has a black and white wire that runs under the battery all the way down here, down, down underneath your drive, and it plugs into the motherboard right here and the other speaker. So in order to get your speakers, guys, you'd have to remove both of these uh, components. And this plug right there, as with any items in, in a computer, try not to pull on the wires to unplug it. Try to manipulate just that plug. So put your fingernails on either side of it, um, a pry tool, a pair of pliers, and, and that's a better way to get it out of that port other than pulling on the wires. Uh, next thing I'll shout out right here, guys, near your drives, this is your CMOS battery right there. If you need to replace this, sometimes they do die. Um, a good way to tell if your CMOS battery has died is every time you start your computer, your clock and BIOS is wrong. Oftentimes that will even prevent the computer from booting up fully, but that could be a sign that your CMOS battery is bad. Some of you may be looking at the CMOS battery because you want to manually reset BIOS settings. Either way, this is where your CMOS battery is. It's held down by double-sided tape. So if you want to take that off, if you want to remove this, it's very easy. You just grab it and pull and, it, and it'll pop off of, of your motherboard after removing this piece of tape on top. And then you have the plug right here, which is similar to the speaker plugs. Instead of pulling on the wire, you would just use a pry tool or your fingernails to wiggle that out of that port. If your BIOS resetting guys side point, you don't need to remove the battery, just unplug it for 10, 15, 20 seconds and that should be sufficient to reset your BIOS settings. The next thing I'll shout out is your fan right here on the top right of my screen. The fan is held in by these three screws right there, two on the bottom, one on the top left. However, keep in mind that this LCD cable right here that runs through this hinge assembly, this LCD cable interweaves through your fan. So if you wanna get your fan up and you don't wanna damage this LCD connector port, you're gonna to wanna to unplug it and then unrun these wires from around your fan. Now this type of ribbon cable connector right here for the LCD cable, it's very breakable. I'm gonna play you a clip right now of the best way to manipulate this kind of ribbon cable connector. Okay, so to take a ribbon cable out of this kind of connector, first you have your ribbon cable here, you have the port on the motherboard, and then you have this retainer clip over here, this clip opens and shuts like a book cover. It opens from this side and the hinges are on this side. So in order to get that up, be very careful, take a small flat pry tool, slide it underneath and pop it up like that. And then the ribbon cable can come out. After taking the ribbon cable out, I like to put it back down for safekeeping so it doesn't get caught on anything and rip. These are very, very breakable, these retainer clips. And if you break it, you're most likely not gonna be able to find a replacement, um, in which case your ribbon cable won't be able to uh, secure down anymore, so be very careful. To get the retainer clip back in, you would pop it up again very carefully. You would slide the ribbon cable in, nice and flush, 
It may take a few times if you're not used to it getting it flush and then just snap the retainer clip down and that's how you would operate that kind of clip. Okay, so after that's unplugged and unrun from the fan, you'll be able to remove your fan after taking those screws out. If you're here to clean it out, now you can blow it out, vacuum it out, whatever you wanna do. If you are cleaning things out because of an overheating issue, make sure to get your vent really well also. For those of you that are proceeding deeper into the computer to get at your heat sink, uh, you see it goes over the fan here and over your CPU and GPU right here. So to get this up, you would undo these three screws here and then these four screws here. After you've removed the heat sink, this is what you're looking at for your CPU and GPU. Keep in mind too, see this little white, yellow, cream looking pad here, as well as these up there. Those are other thermal pads that help in heat distribution and getting heat away from those components. So make sure you don't just rip those off and throw them away. Try not to damage them and then put them back where they were when you put that heat sink back down. If you guys are here to reapply thermal paste, I'll have a link above, also below in the description. It'll be a tutorial on how to correctly apply thermal paste. You definitely wanna clean all the old stuff off first and then reapply just enough thermal paste to cover this area. Uh, you don't want to apply too much or it could have the reverse effect of what you want it to do. Okay, so that's a majority of your components on this computer. It was a quick tutorial, but I hoped it helped you get inside and access whatever you needed to get at. Again, all the replacement parts, the upgrade parts, as well as the tools, there'll be a link below in the description hooking you up with all that so you don't have to search for it yourself. Also, if you have any questions, there'll be an FAQ section below in the description that could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to get to those several times a day. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this helped you out, and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.